Say we wanted to construct a lens of a particular focal length, say 10 centimeters. Then we might wonder, well, what does the focal length of a lens really depend on? Maybe it depends on how curved these surfaces are. Maybe it depends on the refractive index of this material. So to build this particular lens, we need to know the exact relationship between the focal length and these various parameters of that lens. And that's exactly what we'll do in this video. A lens is just a refracting medium bounded by at least one curved surface. In our example, we have both the surfaces to be curved and these surfaces are spherical surfaces, which means they're both parts of a sphere and a lens is called as a thin lens if the thickness of that lens is much smaller much smaller than the radius of curvature of each of that surface. Now, of course, in this diagram, the thickness doesn't look all that small. I've exaggerated the thickness. And we've done that because it'll be easier to draw the ray diagrams and show the ray diagrams. But we'll assume, but we'll just assume that this thickness is actually way smaller than the radius of curvature. Then we'll call that as a thin lens. And our goal now is to figure out what is the focal length of such a thin lens. So let's draw our principal axis. And O is just the center of this thin lens. We usually call that as the optic center. And just like for curved mirrors, to figure out the focal length, we're gonna draw parallel rays of light and see where they meet up. One ray of light will draw along the principal axis. Since this ray of light is perpendicular to both the surfaces, the angle of incidence is zero, so there will be no refraction, and so this ray will go undeviated. How do we know it's perpendicular to the surface? Well, notice that the ray of light is passing through the centers of curvature, and any line through the center of curvature is always perpendicular to the surface. So this ray goes undeviated. The second ray of light will draw above the principal axis. Now this ray of light will refract, it will bend. Now to figure out how it bends, let's first focus only on the first curved surface. So we'll assume the second surface is not there for a while, and now to understand how it bends, let's draw a normal at this point. And that normal is drawn always from the center of curvature. And now let's assume that the outside medium is a rarer medium and the inside medium is a denser medium. And so the ray of light is moving from rarer to denser. The ray of light is going to bend towards the normal. So this ray will bend somewhat like this towards the normal. And these two rays are going to meet somewhere over here. Let's call that point as I. That's where the image is formed. But of course, this is not the final picture because we haven't considered the second surface yet. So this is the image if the second surface was not there. So now let's consider the second surface. Now for the second surface, this is the incident ray. We can totally neglect this initial incident ray. And so again, if we draw a normal, then notice this ray of light is now moving from the denser medium to a rarer medium, and so it's going to bend away from the normal. So here's our normal. So this ray, after refraction, is gonna go away, bend away from the normal, and as a result, somewhere over here maybe, and as a result, notice that the initial two parallel rays are being focused after refraction finally at this point. So this is our principal focus. So here's our principal focus. And this distance from here to here is the focal length. That's what we have to figure out. So how do we figure this out? Well, since we are dealing with refractions at curved surfaces, we'll have to use, no surprise, the curved surface formula. So this is how I like to remember the formula. Rm is the refractive index of the refracted medium, meaning it's a medium that contains the refracted ray. Similarly, IM is the refractive index of the incident medium. Again, it means the medium that contains the incident ray. And V is the image distance, U is the object distance, and R is the radius of curvature. And since we have two surfaces, we'll have to apply this formula to each of this surface. So let's start with the first surface. When we apply this formula to the first surface, we are going to absolutely neglect the second surface. That means we are going to neglect this refraction that's happening to the second surface. And we'll assume that the two rays are actually going to meet up at this point. And that's the trick to solving problems when we have multiple surfaces. We only consider the first surface, ignore all the other surfaces. All right, now let's apply this formula. All right, the refracted medium is the medium that contains the refracted ray, that's over here. So it will be this medium. Let's say its refractive index is N2. 
and the incident medium will be the outside medium because this is the incident ray. And let's say its refractive index is N1. So let's substitute that over here. So the refracted medium, that is N2, divided by V, which is the image distance. For the first surface, this is the image. So the image distance is going to be this distance. Now, since our lens is thin, whether you consider the distance from this point or consider it from this point, it's not going to matter. So it's the same thing. That's the whole reason we're dealing with thin lenses. So this is the image distance V. It doesn't matter where you take it from, all right? So this is the image distance V. So it's going to be N2 divided by V minus the incident medium, that's over here, the outside medium, that's N1. N1 divided by U, the object distance. Well, where is the object? Well, the rays of light are parallel. And so the object is far away. That means infinity. So we could say object distance is infinity. That's going to be equal to this minus that. So that's going to be N2 minus N1, minus N1 divided by R. Well, what's R? R is the radius of curvature of this surface. And since this is the first surface, let's call that radius of curvature as R1, R1. Now you may be curious as to why we're not using sign conventions at all. We'll talk a little bit more about that later on. But this is what we got for surface number one. Let's call that as equation number one. Now let's apply the equation to the second refracting surface. And so for the second surface, after refraction, the image is formed over here. And so now we have to apply this formula for the second surface. It would be a great idea to pause the video and see if you can try this yourself. All right, let's do this. Okay, again, refracted medium. This time, notice refraction is happening in the outside medium. So this time the refracted medium is N1. So we'll get N1 divided by the image distance. Well, our image now is over here. Think about this, for this surface, this is the image. And the image distance itself is the focal length. So divided by the focal length F minus the incident medium. Well, this is the incident ray, and therefore now the incident medium is the medium of the lens. And so the incident medium is N2 divided by the object distance. And we might think, well, the object distance is infinity, right? Well, no, we have to be very careful, and this is the important part. You see, if when you consider these incident rays, that's, where the ob that's when the object is at infinity. But these were the incident rays for the first surface. For our second surface, these are the incident rays. And here's how I like to think about it. Object is where the incident rays meet. Simple, all right? So, for example, if here was the object, then if we drew incident rays like this, incident rays like this, wherever the incident rays meet, that would be our object, isn't it? So we just have to ask ourselves, where are these two incident rays meeting? Well, if you backtrack them, they're not gonna meet anywhere. But if you go front, they are meeting at this point. And it's for that reason, it's for that reason, this is going to be our object. Now I know it sounds a little weird to call that as an object, because the rays of light are not really meeting at that point. They would have met if it wasn't for this surface. So we give a name to such kind of an object, we call that as a virtual object, as a virtual object. But we don't have to worry too much about that. Nevertheless, it's the object for our second surface. And this is the general way in which how we, uh, how we solve any problem with multiple surfaces. The image for the first surface acts like the object for the next surface. This is the general way to do uh, problem solving. So anyways, this is our object for second surface, and so our object distance will be V. Whatever was the image distance before, now that same is our object distance, all right? So this is going to be our object distance, and so that will be equal to, we have to do N1 minus N2, so N1 minus minus N2 divided by the radius of curvature, the radius of curvature of this surface, that need not be the same in general for the radius of curvature of the other surface. And so we can write as divide by R2. And this now is our equation two, equation for the second surface. And so now if you look at the final picture, in reality, these rays of light are actually meeting up at this point. This was something that we just cooked up, assuming what would have happened if this was not there. So this V is something that we cooked up and we shouldn't have that in our final equation. 
And so somehow by using these two equations, we can get rid of V. In fact, if you look carefully, you have a negative N2 by V here, you have a positive N2 by V here. So if we just add the two equations, the V cancels out, and then we can figure out what the focal length is. And so again, it would be a great idea to pause the video, add the two equations, and see what you get. All right, let's do that. Let's make some space. All that is left is now algebra. So if we add the two equations, these cancel out. So on the left-hand side, we are left with N1 divided by F minus N1 over infinity. Well, what's N1 over infinity? 1 over infinity is zero. So N1 over infinity is also zero. So this gap goes. So all is left is N1 over F. That's equal to, we're adding these two, right? So that'll be N1 minus N2 divided by R2 plus N2 minus N1 and two minus N1 divided by R1. And so finally, we can simplify that. Not finally, there, there might be one more step involved over there. We can take N2 minus N1 common. So let's do that. So if you take N2 minus N1 common out from here, we end up with one over R1 over here, one over R1. And notice, since we took N2 minus N1 common, there's a negative one that remains over here. So you get negative one, one over R2. Just think about this for a while. I just picked out N2 minus N1, so a negative one remains. And so finally, we can divide the whole equation by N1. And so this goes from here, and N1 comes over here. And this now, we can treat this as our final equation, grand equation, that gives us what the focal length is. And if you look at this carefully, in fact, you know what, we can make one more simplification. We can divide each term by N1, and so, I'll just do that over here to save space. You'll get N2 by N1, minus N1 by N1, that is just one. All right, so excuse this, because I was running out of space. So this is the final equation that tells us what the focal length is, and you can see that depends on the refractive indices and the radii of curvature. And we give a name to this equation, we call this as the lens makers equation, or lens makers formula. It's called lens makers because tomorrow if you want to make a lens of a suitable focal length, then you can use this equation and choose appropriate values of N2, N1, R1, and R2. So to quickly summarize, here are the key takeaways of this derivation. Since we're dealing with curved surfaces, for each surface, we're going to use the curved surface refraction formula. Then, the image of that first surface is going to be the object for the second surface. Then you put together the equation, and we end up with this final result. One last question we might have is why we haven't used sign conventions when we substituted in this curved surface formula. Well, think of it this way. This is a general formula which works for any case when it comes to curved surface refraction. Now, if we were solving a numerical which deals with specific cases, then we would have substituted using signs. And that's what we always do. When we are solving numericals, we always substitute signs. Which means whenever you substitute numbers with signs in a general formula, you end up solving for that specific case, like in a numerical. But our goal was not to solve for a specific case. Our goal was to solve for a general case. And that is the reason we didn't use any sign conventions. And as a result, we ended up with a general formula. This will work for any case, not just a convex lens, but concave or whatever thin lens we have.